Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD bodybuilder, back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to grow lagging body parts, or more in general, how to break training plateaus. At some point, everyone's going to stall in their training progress or have weak muscle groups. So it's important to know how to troubleshoot your training to continue to have ongoing gains. Quick outline for today, we're gonna to go through this in a systematic fashion using my staircase of training priorities. This model ranks training priorities in order of importance from most important at the bottom to less important at the top. And you need to program each step in before you move on to the next. So in order, we're gonna talk about consistency, progressive overload, volume, frequency, intensity and rep ranges, and exercise selection in order to help you break plateaus. If you've been enjoying my content so far, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get into it. Before we get into those variables, it's important to first establish that we should be considering each muscle group as having its own separate program. That is, you can alter all of those variables we just talked about independently from one muscle group to the other. Having this approach in mind is really going to help you optimize your training for each muscle group and make sure you get the best progress overall. All right, first of all, and most important is consistency. Now the important thing here to notice is that muscle growth takes time. The process of muscle growth is complex and it often takes months for you to see visual progress. So don't be discouraged if you're not seeing immediate results. One of the biggest mistakes people make when it comes to lacking body parts is giving up on them completely just because they don't see results after a couple of months. It's best to get used to sticking to a program and constantly making small adjustments to optimize your progress over time. If you do this for long enough, you will see changes. Getting into our training variables, progressive overload is probably the most important thing you need to establish if you really want to see muscle growth over time. If you find your progress stalling, for example, if you've just been adding weight to the bar every session, you might want to think about switching to a more structured progression scheme. I talked about this in a previous video, but there are a few progression schemes that a lot of bodybuilders find useful. First off is linear or single progression where you just progress one variable at a time, usually weight. So in this case, you might add a little bit of weight every workout or every week or even on a longer time frame. And you would keep the other variables like number of sets and number of reps constant. The next progression scheme is double progression. So here you're progressing one variable before progressing another variable. The most common way bodybuilders use this is they'll choose a rep range, say 8 to 12, start at 8 reps with a certain amount of weight, add reps until they get to the top of the rep range, so 12, and then add weight and come back down to eight reps. You can also do this with adding sets as well. Next, we have triple progression, where you're progressing all three variables of sets, reps, and weight on the bar simultaneously throughout a training block. I think this is a great way to go about things, but it does take experience. Then you've got wave loading progression. So for example, if you're using your eight to 12 rep range, you start at 12 reps, you move down to 10 and then eight, with higher weight each time, and then come back to 12 reps with more weight than you were doing with 12 reps before. If you stall on one of these progression methods, you should try moving on and trying another one. All right, next up we have volume. Now volume is gonna be the next most important variable when it comes to bodybuilding. You can define volume as sets times reps times weight lifted. As a proxy, I like to count volume using the number of weekly sets for a muscle group. Now the important thing about volume is that it follows this inverse U-shaped curve. So if you look at the rate of gains on the y-axis, Axis and the volume in terms of weekly sets on the x-axis. As you increase sets initially, you're going to get more gains. And at some point, you're going to find a volume that gives you the optimal progress. However, if you do too much, you're going to get less progress. So your goal with volume is to find the optimal number of sets for each body part that gives you the best rate of gains. Note that this curve will look different for different muscle groups and will also change throughout a training block and throughout your training career but it's still a very useful concept to have in your mind. Now, if you're finding that your rate of gains is very low, it means you're somewhere on either side of the curve. Starting out, most people are probably gonna be on this end of the curve where they're not doing enough. And they should try adding in some weekly sets and see if it gives better progress. For hypertrophy, I define progress as adding to your multi-set 6 to 12 rep max over time, which means you're adding to how much weight you can lift over multiple sets in the 6 to 12 rep range. If you're doing a lot of volume every week, or if you find that you're always sore or having trouble recovering in general, you might be on this side of the curve, in which case you'll want to subtract a few sets and see if that gives you better progress. To titrate your volume, I would suggest adding or subtracting one to two sets, depending on where you think you are in the curve, and see if it gives you better results. You'll note that a lot of people recommend 
10 to 20 sets per week per muscle group as a general guideline. However, I wanna emphasize that this curve is very individual for every person and for each muscle group. So certain muscle groups and maybe all of your muscle groups may fall outside of this range. You'll have to try it out for yourself and see. Now, moving on to frequency, I recommend that you hit each muscle group at least twice per week. If you find yourself stalling on a certain muscle group, you might consider increasing the frequency at which you train it. This can help, especially if you're adding in volume because the extra day can accommodate those additional sets. All right, let's move on to intensity and rep ranges. Starting off with relative intensity, this is how close you take your sets to failure. According to the literature, you're gonna be pretty good in terms of hypertrophy, as long as you land in the zero to four reps in reserve range. I currently recommend aiming for one to two reps in reserve for most muscle groups. However, this will vary by muscle group and even for certain exercises. So you'll have to tweak things for yourself. If you find yourself stalling, I'd recommend trying to add or subtract one from your RAR. So if you're more on the lower end of relative intensity and you're something like three to four reps in reserve, try removing one rep in reserve and going a little bit closer to failure. If you're going to failure on every set, you might wanna try adding a rep in reserve. Here I wanna point out that relative intensity is related inversely to volume. So if you're adding in sets, you probably won't be able to go as close to failure all the time. So you might wanna try playing around with these two variables in conjunction with each other to find what works best for you. In terms of rep ranges, really anything in the five to 30 rep range is going to work for muscle growth. However, this is going to vary depending on the exercise and muscle group. In a lot of my programming, you'll see rep ranges like five to eight, six to 10, eight to 12, 12 to 20, and 20 to 30. These are all good rep ranges, but you'll find that they work best for specific exercises and even at specific parts of your workout. So if you find yourself stalling, you might wanna try switching up your rep ranges either to a lower or a higher rep range. Lastly, we have exercise selection. So if you've manipulated all the variables up till now and you're still stalled, it might be time to try different exercises. Now note that off the bat, if an exercise doesn't feel good, don't do it. But even if it has been working for you, you might enter a period of staleness eventually, and it might be best to change it up. When you're switching up your exercises, you can really manipulate any aspect of the exercise. You can change the angle, grip width, grip attachment, and machine that you're using to find what works best for you. I typically have a group of exercises that are my favorites that I will rotate between when I really stall out on one. Hope that helped guys. I really want you to think of your body like a laboratory. All of these different variables can be changed in the gym and it's really nice to be a bodybuilder because it's so easy to change these variables. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video and leave me a comment. In particular, what's your lagging muscle group? Let me know below. If you want to hear about some fitness controversies and my opinions on them, check out this playlist where I go through some of these topics. If you've been getting value from this channel, make sure you subscribe and share the channel with your fitness friends so they can benefit from it too. See you next time.